so this is the kind of fishing that I feel like I've been doing um, for the longest time. Uh, ever since my father would take me out of uh, Gloucester, Massachusetts for a cotton haddock, uh, I've always just fallen in love with this kind of fishing. So for this trip here, we're going to be fishing out of Hyannis, Massachusetts aboard the uh, Angler. A, uh, it's one of the boats in the uh, Helen H. fleet. We're going to be targeting George's Bank, and we're going to be mainly going after cod and pollock. I'm um, going to be using 50-pound braid and 50-pound uh, leader for this trip. Um, we didn't use any bait. Um, it was only jig fishing, and the jigs were anywhere from between 12 to about 17 or 18 ounces. So going to leave the description of the uh, gear in the, uh, in the description of the video, and um, I'll be coming in a little bit later to point out a few things uh, throughout the uh, course of the video. Hope you enjoy watching. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about the Look, beagle, your poor beagle, beagle bait. Stock or big one? Can't tell. It's coming up. Is it? Yeah. Oh, you got something like that. That's a fish. Yeah. Here's a bottle. Or a very small bottom. I don't know. Let's see. Small bottom? Small bottom. I think it fell off. <laughs> I think it fell. Oh, wait, no, it's still there. He's swimming up. Yeah, he is. I don't think it's a cod. Forty and a half inch. Forty and a half inch. Yeah, it's gonna be like the. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that is that just below? Forty one, I think. Is, the is it forty one? Yeah, it's something weird like that. Maybe it's forty two. Yeah. Oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. wrong with it. It might be. <laughs> look at that. You can keep these on the little thing? You can, yeah. You can keep it any size. Hey, yeah. mate. This isn't a dog. Come here, mate. This isn't a dog. He's got a big fish here. So I can keep this. I can put it. Yeah, throw it in the cord. Look at him. So for anyone that's done cod or haddock fishing for a while, um, probably has an idea what this might be here. Um, quite often when the when you feel this kind of uh, drag on a fish, it's uh, usually not going to be a bottom fish. Uh, at this point, it was pretty pretty clear this was um, some kind of a shark here that I'd hooked on to. Um, generally, there are two types of sharks you would run into when you're doing this kind of fishing. One of them is a blue shark or a blue dog, which are not edible. And then the other kind is what's called the poor beagle. And the poor beagle sharks, from what I'm told, they're very good eating. So, not sure what it is yet at this point. I'm reeling it up, but I did have a did have a pretty good feeling that it was one of those two. We got two good fish over here. They got me snagged. Hey, mate. Shark. Holy shit. Poor beagle. Oh, oh that's awesome. Yeah. I got I got something big here too. There you <laughs> go. Is that a poor beagle? That's fucking cool. Jesus. Yeah, he's on. He's on. Yeah, he's on me. I'm, I'm I'm involved in this nonsense too. I got something way out I there. I'm gonna try and go. Just give me a knife and a floaty, I'll get him. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Hold on, hold on, careful, careful with that line. Careful with that oh, line. All right. Let me give you a sec. Um, yeah. Is that a four beagle? Yeah, you've got it on. He's yeah, he's got still it on, on there. I've got something big out there too. Uh, well, you got two options. You can either try and bring it in, or you can cut your line right now. Is it four beagle? Uh, yeah. Get the harpoon. I got one. Right there. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> no, I don't want. I really would like to get this four beagle, but I don't want to tangle everyone up. So. <laughs> Oh, what do you me, so. what do you say? What, what do you think is easier? Get it in. Where did the start? Oh, you know what? He broke off. He's off. Yeah, he broke off. Yeah, so that's how it goes, I guess. Um, it was pretty cool though, just getting that fish up to the surface there. Um, according to the mates and and some of the people on the boat, it looks like it was a poor beagle. Uh, so unfortunately, wasn't able to get that to the boat, but it was definitely definitely fun reeling it up um, as far as I did on there. I've never had um, a shark hit a jig like that before. A lot of times, what happens is when you're reeling up a cod or a haddock or something, then the shark will bite onto that. But I think in this case right here, that weight felt pretty heavy right when I set the hook 
choke on it. So I think that shark probably did hit the jig there instead of hitting something that was on the way up. But I guess we'll never know. But we'll uh, we'll continue fishing and uh, hopefully we'll get some other stuff for the cooler. shakes I don't like this I don't like this at all no. species but And one other thing to note on this trip here is that um, unlike pretty much every other trip that I've done, um, there was actually no bait used on this trip. Um, the Everyone was using jigs. They were providing jigs for everyone on board. And apparently the reason for that was that the dogfish were really hitting everything um, that was dropped down as far as the bait goes. So the jigs were kind of a way to try to weed out some of the dogfish and, and get more cod or pollock hookups on these trips. So I've never had that happen before. Um, some people were kind of wanting to use some of the bait on the trip but um you know at the end of the day i, I tend to trust what the mates were saying on the, these trips here so we ended up uh, ended up using the jigs all day w without any bait and um, most people did do pretty well on the trip i would say Clam if you want it. And at the time of this trip, uh, we were fishing a five uh, fish limit on the cod, and they had to be between 22 and 28 inches. So unfortunately, this one here was a little bit short. Um, what I'm doing here on this next part uh, is kind of cut out of the film a little bit so you can't see it perfectly. But when you bring up these fish um, from the, the deeper depths like this, we're probably fishing around 250, 300 feet of water. A lot of times what will happen is that the fish's stomach gets enlarged. And when you're releasing them, if, if that air is still in their stomach, they have a hard time swimming down and quite often they'll end up dying so what i was doing there in that part is i was, I was patting the stomach of the fish to get the air out of the stomach and then when you release the fish it's easier for it to swim down and in the case right there the fish swim right down so if you're ever doing any of these trips and you're fishing deeper waters it's a good idea to be sure that you're getting the air out of the stomachs of the fish so they can swim down easier and kind of cut down on the fish mortalities at least. <laughs> And I didn't realize it at the 
the time, but it looks like there was a little bit of salt that had got on the lens of the camera for uh, these next couple fish here. So apologies for the uh, poor quality on the video for these next few fish. And that's going to be the last fish of this trip. Um, definitely not one of my uh, better trips as far as numbers, uh, but you know what? It was still a, still a good trip. I'm happy to walk away with four cod. Um, big thank you to the captain and the crew of the Angler. Had a great time as always. And thank you all for watching this video. I uh, hope that you have enjoyed it. Um, if you have enjoyed, please go ahead and leave a like down below. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you all out on the water.